Hi guys and welcome to, I usually say my channel, but I'm gonna say my home. Uh, don't get very excited because it's not the whole house I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna show you my pantry. So I'm at my front door, as you can see. Um, I'm in beautiful Arizona and you can probably hear the sound of the AC. In Arizona, in the summertime, AC is working 24-7. Um, I think it's a hundred and maybe 12 degrees uh, Fahrenheit today. I'll give you a formula. So to figure out if you're in a different place in the world, you want to figure out how hot it is in Arizona. So Fahrenheit is 112 degrees minus 32 divided by 1.8. And you go figure out, take your calculator, how hot it is in Arizona in Celsius. Um, anyway, guys, so by the way, do you like my t-shirt? It's a Minnie Mouse. I have um, a Minnie, Minnie Mouse watch too. I'm a big fan of Minnie Mouse, Minnie, Mickey Mouse and, and the friends. <laughs> and that's by Adidas. By the way, it's not a, a commercial for Adidas, so disregard that. I have to tell you, the idea for this pantry came during the pandemic because um, I was stocking on a lot of things and I do have um, a normal pantry that came with the house that was kind of small, kind of like very deep. Uh, in order for me to get something or to find something, I had to unload the whole entire pantry and then find that thing. Sometimes I just usually get very lazy and just gonna go buy another bag of flour or something like this. Um, so I had a small closet. It was a coat closet, okay? I'm in Arizona, okay? You see there's palm trees and it's pretty much hot all year around. It's not like I needed a coat closet. So I decided to give it up and build myself a very impressive pantry. Uh, and I wanted a walk-in pantry. So that's the main entrance to the house and um, right there is my pantry. I've decided I don't mind that walk from the kitchen to the pantry because I have a really big pantry now and I wanted um, this pantry to be kind of my secret place, kind of something that I come in and I just get inspired. I contacted the local company here in Arizona called The Closet Factory and I asked them to come in and to actually do the design in person. Um, it was difficult. <laughs> During that time, all the things, the designs should have been done or designed online. But I kind of wanted to meet the designer and I wanted to explain to them what actually I want. I wanted them to see the space that needed to be turned into pantry. This lady came in, she was one of the head designers of the company. And of course, we're speaking like six feet apart, both of us wearing masks and um, scared, you know. Um, pretty much not getting into each other's faces or territory, but uh, she looked at the space and she said, you have a very impressive space here to build a beautiful pantry. And she offered some things to me, some things I had an idea for. Like, for example, I wanted to showcase some things. I wanted uh, to have this pantry like a secret place where I come in to relax or to get inspired for uh, a video recipe. I wanted a countertop and I wanted a spice rack. Yes, I have a spice rack there mm -hmm. because I have tremendous amount uh, of spices in, in my collection and I use a lot of spices. So that was kind of challenging. We didn't know where to put it. And I wanted uh, some extra space for storing things like my baking trays and big pots and pans and, and just different things. I wanted to have a pull-out drawers where I can store spatulas and um, 
tongs and I mean things that I use in my cooking I didn't want them to be in my kitchen yeah so I had this closet designed and um, now I can show you what it looks like and you will be really impressed the entrance to my pantry is right next to the front door which is kind of funny and I made it like all pretty and stuff <laughs> because when guests actually um, get lost in my house uh, they don't know which door to go and so they go to this door before it was a coat closet so they will end up in the coat closet but now they're ending up in a beautiful pantry so let's walk in guys Da -da. let me turn the lights on I actually had an electrician to install a daylight light so they're pretty bright and of course you know I have a dimmer here so I can dim it um, up and down if I don't want it to be bright but it is pretty bright here and as you can see, I'm with my camera here and it's plenty of light for us to film. Let me um, tell you and show you everything what I have in my pantry. So here is the spice rack that I had designed and it goes all the way up. Most of the spices I have are from pansies. So I have some other ones that I got elsewhere, but I kind of had them organized by um, use. So I have like all the, the, the peppers here, the paprikas and the, um, cayenne pepper and this is um, chili con uh, carne seasoning which is some sort of a pepper too I guess but um, my designer designed this spice rack so the shelves can come out you can just tilt them like this if you need to get spices out and you can just put them back in but I have every single spice that exists in the world <laughs> in my spice rack so these spices are all for baking i have some cream of tartar i have some orange peel apple pie spice which is great for making these thanksgiving um, pies and also um, lemon peel and um, some cinnamon and then they go all the way down to the bottom and of course they go all the way up um, and on the very top shelf I have things that I don't use very often like a little dragees that I use to decorate either meringues or eclairs in some interesting spices that I don't use quite often like mahlab, um, citric acid, ammonia powder, uh, and xanthan gum. I yet to experience with that one. So let's start on this wall. I have on the very top shelf very unusual rices like a jasmine rice that gava, a sprouted rice that I used in my um, fried rice video, then I have arborio rice, uh, ancient grains, I have parboiled rice. And then going down one shelf, I have more rices there, they're just plain white rice and then um, sushi rice and all different kinds of rices that I needed a bigger containers for. Uh, talking about containers, uh, those are by OXO. Uh, they're wonderful containers, they're kind of pricey, but most of them I got at Costco and then some I ordered on Amazon, some I um, bought at Target. 
but kind of build slowly my container collection because as I mentioned these guys are quite expensive and then we're gonna get to this interesting shelf here where I have all my different peppercorns I have a video about pepper so this is a a tele cherry peppercorns um, a white peppercorns then I have a five blend peppercorns then I have a very unique Sichuan peppercorns. Then we get to a very special salt. I have a molden salt here, which is a finishing salt. Um, you can finish your steaks with it and actually add uh, to chocolates too. Then I have a coarse sea salt that I use for my grinders and the hemline salt that I use for my grinders. And of course here, I have a king of spices which is a saffron and I believe this one is a Spanish saffron that's why it's so red. And these containers that I have are very unique. They have this cork ball inside of them so you just need to slightly twist it and it keeps the air out and also um, uh, I can't do it with one hand because I'm holding the camera but if you like twist it then you can lift it by this lid and it will just stay on um, but um, I thought they were just very unique um, I will enclose the link for you guys where I got these we're gonna get to this shelf here and of course here I have a buckwheat here and look I wrote uh, buckwheat in Russian. In Russian we say grechka and that's how we know it's a buckwheat so I have a big big container of buckwheat here. And then of course the sugar, I have the semolina and then I have a coconut flour and almond flour because I use these the most. And then we get to a smaller containers here. Um, this one is called Assini de Pape. It's actually a pasta. It's a really small round pasta that they use in Italian wedding soup. And then I have very interesting rices here. We have a place here in um, Arizona. It's called the House of Rice. And um, it's a Japanese store and they have the most amazing selection of rices. So you um, can get different uh, types of rice is there that you haven't tried and uh, this one is a jade pearl rice which is green and then of course i have the wild rice and this one is a forbidden rice which is also called emperor's rice on this shelf here i have a variety of things here i have more rice i have like some bread flour I have very unique pastas, like I use this one, the little squares to make chicken noodle soup. Um, I have panko bread crumbs, and then I have the vital wheat, which is a gluten. And what I like about these containers, you see how I had just a small place here. Uh, the full container will would have not fit in there, but this company OXO it makes a skinny container like this that you can perfectly fit in this empty spot. And of course, all different kinds of containers here. Um, the smaller ones, the taller ones, the skinnier ones, the very small ones you could use for your spices. So I have organic rye flour, I have the ground coriander here, the mustard seeds, and I use this um, uh, in a grinder if I want to spice up that um, Salisbury steak. I just posted a video so I use the mustard seed uh, powder in them. And I use the mustard seeds for any types of, uh, uh, like making pickles, for example, that gives them a little bit of spice. Then I have the bulgur here and um, the flaxseed meal. And you see these little tiny containers from OXO, uh, you could use to store your spices, like this, 
like a lot of spices like this spice is razel hanout it's mostly used in moroccan cooking and um, it's a very very beautiful spice and then i have the freeze-dried uh, shallots here and these containers guys i have to show you um they're just amazing you know you have a button here and you just open it up and um, it stores your spices or uh, pantry items safe in here and uh, they have little legs too which is kind of unique you know so you can just slide it like this and then this shelf here which i find very unique it uh, um as I told you, I built this uh, pantry during the pandemic. You couldn't simply just get a regular flower. You had to get all the weird ones and then just bake with them. So I um, created a collection of different uh, flowers here. So if I pull out these containers, then I have the regular flowers in the back. Like I have the whole wheat flour over there and um here's a tip for you guys if you like a specific brand for example like i i like this brand for flour so i don't put my labels on the container i just cut out the label from the bag and i just leave it there so next time if i need to go refill on this flour i know which one to get so i have this whole wheat flour and then i have also red mill fine pastry flour artisan uh what do you say artisan artisan bread flour and then you have the self-rising flour and of course the all-purpose flour which i probably use the most and here on the front row I have all unique flowers and I um, labeled them. These are actually great labels. Uh, they easily um, stick on and then you could peel them off and also you could wash them. So you could wash them with your sponge. Let's say if you don't have this uh, content of the container anymore. So you can reuse these labels. And these are like a chalk uh, markers that you could uh, mark whatever you have in this container. But these are pretty much all the gluten-free flowers. Like I have a buckwheat flower, the walnut flower, the millet flower, the pecan flower. And then we get into organic flowers like a dark rye flower I use for Russian pryaniki and for Russian um, black bread. And then you have the oat flour. Um, I use this for pancakes and blinis. And then you have the spelt flour. I actually posted the recipe on my channel for a spelt flour um, cracker. So you can guys check it out. And here's a helpful tip for you guys. In most of my containers, in the big ones at least, I have these scoops where I can actually scoop out um, the content of the container and measure it out. I bought them in a container store, so I got a whole bunch of small and big ones. And um, you can have them inside your container. And then we're going to go to this shelf here, which I have um, different varieties of flowers. Oh, by the way, this rice also is very interesting is a Madagascar pink rice. I bought it in that store I told you about, the house of rice. And then I have Italian uh, breadcrumbs here. Bulgur, uh, the one I showed you was um, fine. This one's coarse. You could use this um, in bread baking too. Then I have, um, I have a friend that brought me the Egyptian anise from Egypt. So he brought me like, I asked for that much, he brought me like that much. So I had to put it in a bigger container. Um, and then I have the yellow split peas, I have the barley flour and the dark rye flour. 
And then we're gonna go to this shelf here. Uh, you have um, here I have vermicellis, I have vegeta, and this is organic vegeta. Some of you um, actually commented on the videos where I used that soup base and saying, oh, that's full of MSG and stuff. No. Um, so a Vegeta company, which is a European company and uh, in Russia and all over Eastern Europe, we use uh, all, uh, the spice widely because we add it to soups and we add it to uh, different types of sauces. It's very flavorful <clears throat> and they make the organic kind now. And then um, you have different pasta here. Uh, here's a tip for you. If you put the pasta in a container and you label it, don't forget to put the cook cooking time. For example, this small pasta called Ditalini. And so it takes 10 minutes to cook. So just have this also written down in your label. And then here, I have I have a hole in my kitchen I have a whole drawer or I should say cabinet of teas but these are the big tea containers that I couldn't fit there um, I love love this tea it's um, um, I think it's from Sri Lanka and um, and has the most amazing tea there look at this it's so beautiful so my son is a tea fanatic, so every time he wants tea, he comes here to grab his favorite. And um, his favorite teas are actually not these ones, but the ones up there. And these are all kind of limited edition um, teas that were um, made by a company that is um, called Adagio Teas. So, for example, this is the Russian collection and has raspberries, has raspberry leaf and has like all different kinds of blends here. And they um, made this whole collection with different countries presented. And this is, by the way, my son's favorite tea. It's called the Egyptian tea. And let's see what's in it. Uh, chamomile, peppermint, spearmint and with raspberry leaves. I mean, it's not my choice of tea, but he likes it. He says it helps him to sleep. So <laughs> this is a, a second container that I ordered for him, but he apparently loves this tea. And on the very bottom shelf, I have a different varieties of broths and stocks. I have um, also milks like a hemp milk, cashew milk, have um, almond milk, vegetable broth, uh, beef broth, mushroom broth, chicken stock, and then the coconut milk. So I use this in soups, uh, the broths of course, not the milks, <laughs> and I use the milks in smoothies and um, uh, to eat cereal. And remember, I told you my pantry is different from anybody else's pantry um, because I do have another pantry where to store um, cans and oils and vinegars and uh, preserves. So this one is um, just for myself to get inspired. And of course, I had to have this little Russian corner here. <laughs> and this is Russian samovar. And um, these little matryoshkas actually are the tea containers. So there's a tea inside of them. So they're just like little tea containers. And then I have more of the beautiful Russian tea here. Um, with this um, design, it's called Palik. And that one's from Krasnodar. It's just like different herbs here. And um, I have here my balalaika, guys. Do you want to hear this balalaika? So here. Uh. Is it cute? By the way, this balalaika is not for playing. <laughs> um, it's like a music box. 
but that's also that's also where I hide the candy so <laughs> I have this Russian um, candy here hidden in this balalaika and that's the very famous ones from Russia like we have this caramel candy called the black cat and um, we have this lemon candy that's called limonchik which means lemon in Russian and like all different kinds um, because sometimes when you go on the plane or somewhere you know I just keep those in my pocket because if my ears get clogged <laughs> on the plane uh, here's the trick then you can um, suck on the on this candy on the hard candy and you ears will get unplugged so by the way in Russia when I was a child when you uh, fly on the plane they give you this little hard candy so your ears don't get all clogged out this is my daughter's uh, favorite it's called kiss kiss <laughs> and that's a little cat because to call a cat we say kiss 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 kiss, kiss. so it's like a kiss kiss for the cat but it's um I believe it's um, a hard candy, some sort of uh, maybe um, caramel candy. But I wanted a little Russian spot here in my pantry. So here you go. And then we're going to go on this side of the pantry where um, on the very top, I actually had a, to get a big ladder to get things um, put there. And those are the things that I don't use on daily basis, like my tagines and my jam dish and my um, pot to uh, melt the chocolate. I don't use this very often. That's why it's sitting up there. And on this shelf, I wanted to have a vintage containers. And uh, they all actually have what it says on the container. So the pasta one will have a pasta in it and the coffee one will have a coffee beans in it and the popcorn will have a popcorn in these containers I um, they are vintage I was not able to get them here in US but I found them on German Amazon so if you guys want a link and if you collect the vintage containers you can get them from the German Amazon. And um, if some of you uh, watched my channel for a long time, you know I collect tea and I also like tea. So I have a lot of tea videos. So therefore, I wanted to have this middle space of my pantry to be dedicated to tea. So now if I need to reach something here in my pantry, I have to put this little stool here so I can climb up. Um, I wanted to show you this. Um, this is a teapot from Uzbekistan. It's called Pachtagul. Um, Pachta in Uzbek language is um, a cotton, cotton plant. So this is what it represents. And uh, uh, this is how they drink the tea. They drink t the tea from these little dishes here. And they have a different varieties. They have some that you eat soup from you have some that you drink tea from and these little tiny ones believe it or not are for drinking cognac look how beautiful they are and on this shelf i have all my grinders so here i have a quite a big grinder collection because although i have a lot of spices but i do like to grind my own spices so for example this one i bought in sedona arizona um, that's for grinding rosemary so let's say you are making olive oil infused with rosemary so you can grind it right into the dipping dish and this one has sage um, i have this tiny grinder you probably saw me using it so many times in my videos but this one, the tiny one, is for grinding saffron. And I have these beautiful grind grinders from Turkey. And then you just feed your seeds inside this uh, grinder. And then you grind them like you would grind salt and pepper. And these two blue ones are from Egypt. I have a friend that brought me these because she knew I was collecting grinders. So this one 
is done from alabaster. It's just this beautiful stone that is native to Egypt and actually is great for grinding spices because here as you can see it's all polished but inside if you look at it it's kind of rough so you can grind your spices very easily in here here on these two shelves i have my collection of gzhel gzhel it's something very native to russia we have this art on um, um, porcelain that is done by artists and then they actually paint it all by hand so if you look at some of these pieces here um i don't know what this is for maybe like a candy dish but each piece will be signed by artist it will tell you exactly who painted the design of each and every single piece so they kind of like one of a kind and um these two girls that i have there I inherited from my grandmother. I think they're maybe from um, the 1920s, that's what she said, or 1930s, so they're very old. And um, yeah, I had it all tucked uh, in uh, my um, china cabinet, so I decided I kind of just want to display it here because it gives me like... Um, a pleasure to look at it and to get inspired and this shelf is all for cups and saucers and those are quite special each one of them is done by hand and um, this is by imperial porcelain and um, it's absolutely beautiful guys they use uh, 24 karat gold to paint the cups um, and the saucers and look at this you cannot even feel them how light they are so when you drink tea from them and the way they designed like the shape of them is um when you pour the tea in it um you can drink it right away because by the design and how um, thin the porcelain is um maybe it's like a bone china or something that doesn't make you hot, your tea very hot. So I have a whole collection of this uh, beautiful teacups. And the reason I wanted to display them in my pantry, and you guys are gonna think why in the world she has them in her pantry, is because I wanna use them. So every time I wanna drink a cup of tea, I wanna get one of these beautiful teacups out and enjoy my tea here on the very top shelf I have chocolate and of course I need to get on my little stool uh, both of my kids are very tall and um, they're taller than me my daughter is 5'11 my son is 6'2 so for these guys when they come here and that's the only thing they come to this pantry for is to get this Russian chocolate from here like I have these two Russian chocolates and I have some organic chocolates so what that's what they come here for and by the way they don't need a stool to get those out of the the top shelf besides tea i'm a coffee drinker so i have a lot of coffee here um i usually get it when they give you discounts so this is by nespresso i have nespresso machine so i have all different varieties of coffee here and i drink coffee maybe twice or three times a day and although you can pretty much access all the video recipes on youtube now i do love collecting cookbooks and i have some unique ones i have some that i inherited uh, from my mother from my grandmother and i have some that i bought uh, myself because i just found them very unique so now i have my all cooking books in order and easy access to them if i need to look something up and here i store all my things for baking um different types of variety of things big containers baking containers cake containers um these pots i actually had a friend that brought those uh, for me from Azerbaijan 
there for making the famous Azerbaijani uh, dish called piti. And um, the reason I haven't made it or posted on my channel because there's an ingredient that goes into there um, that I cannot get anywhere. But I can find the use for this because I thought they're very unique uh, ones. And here all the baking trays in different forms for baking needs. And um, in this corner, I store my pots and pans. So I do have one pan by Rifoni. Uh, Rufoni, I think you pronounce it. It's kind of very exquisite um, uh, maker, Italian maker. And all my pans and pots are stored here always a good idea to have some um, kind of a carpet here or a rug in your pantry because when you step into your pantry or if you put a little stool you don't want to kind of trip so I put this one here that I also found on Amazon that uh, the design of it matches my countertops how cool is that in my pantry, I have three pull-out doors, and um, they're very deep. Um, in this one, for example, I store all of my rolling pins, my scrapers, and all the things for baking, like to deal with the dough and cakes, um, ice cream scoops, different um, sizes. Um, for making cupcakes and just measure out the dough. I have the spatulas over there. And um, of course I have plenty of rolling pins here. I came once uh, to my friend's house and we wanted to bake something. So I asked her, where is your rolling pin? She said, a what? So <laughs> she didn't have any, but look at me. <laughs> I have like, what, maybe seven different ones. Um, and then this is a pizza cutter. So you just cut pizza into slices, kind of unique. And then this one here, I got from Uzbekistan. That's the dough stamp. So when they make this Uzbek bread, and I have a video on my channel, in the middle of the bread so it doesn't rise, they kind of stamp it and it leaves this beautiful pattern on your bread, on this bag bread called lipeshka. In this drawer, I have all the wooden spoons and spatulas and ladles and big uh, things that I cannot store in my kitchen, like these um, uh, forks are for mixing salads. I have some uh, pastry brushes here and I have some kind of sushi items here. Um, I got these bento boxes in San Francisco because I stayed in Japantown so I thought they were quite unique and my daughter loves them. She sometimes um, takes them and then puts like little lunch in, in it. Uh, they have like different levels where you can put different things in them and also some sushi molds and then this is um, a mold to make um, pierogies and then some sushi presses like this which is kind of unique um, I got it from a friend she brought it for me from um, Japan so that's for making sushi and also some rice presses where you can make different types of sushis. So I make my own sushi, guys. Uh, maybe one day I will be brave enough to post a video. Um, I'm not a professional sushi maker, but I think I make a pretty good sushi. So here you go. And in this drawer, I have very fun stuff here. I have my steam escapers <laughs> that I use in my videos when I make soups and I have some um, measuring spoons and I have this guy here this is for measuring pasta like if you don't know how much pasta to boil for like one portion four portions <laughs> 
three portions or two portions this is how you measure out your pasta you just stick the um, it's mostly for spaghetti you just stick a bunch of spaghetti in this person's mouth and that's how you know for how many people you're making spaghetti and this one I bought this um, a long time ago uh, it, that's the that makes your boiled egg square <laughs> which is kind of cute I thought it was cute I tried it it actually works so you could use the square eggs um, for any type of decoration or just for people to ask you <laughs> where the heck did you get this if you ask me I don't know where I got this but you guys could look it up maybe find it on Amazon it's um, it's called the egg cuber in my pantry I also wanted a countertop um, because I wanted to pull things down from the shelves and maybe set up for my recipe um, and then um, I have this book here which I really love this is um, the Downton Abbey cookbook <laughs> um, I actually cooked a couple dishes from here um, and I really like it so uh, maybe one day I will post a couple videos using um, recipes from this book and this is a very unique uh, British teapot for I used it in my video um, uh, where I told you guys etiquette for British tea drinking or afternoon tea in a corner here because I didn't know where to put it and I didn't want to put it all the way up top I have this beautiful uh, Spanish cazuela it's um, it's a clay dish that uh, they use in Mexican and Spanish cuisine to cook various foods uh, I mean you can cook paella in it you can cook any kind of stews in it and I had to get the uh, also um, the serving tray which is this um, serving tray um, that when you make the dish um, let's say paella and you want to serve it right away so you serve it in this thing and I also got some um, smaller Cazuelas like this one is for flans and desserts and this ones are for serving paella or anything you want to make in um, desserts and this spoon is for mixing a paella so I actually have a great idea for paella recipe and I will post it very soon so uh, stay tuned on my counter in the corner I also have this Gong Fu uh, table that I used in my Gong Fu style um, tea brewing I just didn't know where else to put it so I thought that would be a perfect place for it and it also kind of a decorative piece that you can display in your pantry and I also asked for um, a vertical shelves like this where I could store big platters and uh, um, stones and um, cookie trays and, and, and big dishes like this because just to store them in the kitchen you need a lot of room but if they stored vertically like this look they you could store three of them and they barely take any room um, so I have all different kinds for making baklava and making different types of food and I also have a very long one on the bottom and these um, uh, trays are bigger than the ones I showed you so that's where they go on the bottom and um, I have some baking stones there and uh, different types of platters and here I have this huge um, cookie trays so they stored in this little shelf here and also remember these I posted the video about how to make your own ice cream so I store these little containers for making ice cream here 
so that's it guys that was a very long tour of my pantry i was holding on to this video for a long time but finally i made it and the reason i was holding on to it because i knew it was gonna come up very long so if you watch till the end thank you so much and keep organized and keep cooking Thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe and I will see you soon, bye!